Go ahead and praise the Lord a little while. Go ahead and praise him a little while. Go ahead and lift up his name a little while. Ah, yes. Ah, I feel like that old song. He's been so good to me. I cannot tell it all. He's been so good to me. I cannot tell it all. So why don't you just lift your voice one time and say, Thank you, Jesus. I can't hear you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So glad to be home and in the presence of the Lord and in the presence of you folk. My, it's good to be among people that love each other. Thank the Lord for the unity of this church. I don't know of any schisms and isms and, 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 and uh, cliques and all that kind of stuff. We just, we just one big Holy Ghost family, aren't we? Amen. Amen. Pastor uh, B said something about me being his favorite preacher. He's my favorite preacher. You can go across this country and ask people what I say about Brother B, and they'll say that Brother Wilson says he's the best preacher in the world. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Give your pastor a good hand. You know, there, there's a lot of, just keep standing a minute. We're used to standing around here, aren't we? There's a lot of, there's a lot of preachers that can preach good, but they're not good preachers. Uh, you, you'll, you'll get that maybe sometime. But he's not only a, a, a preacher's good, he's a good preacher. He's a good man. He loves souls. Amen. I, I'm going to read my verse here in a minute, but I was at General Conference the other day, and they had uh, Brother Mark McCool and myself to speak on pastoral transition. And I told them, I said, the only competition that Pastor V and I have is, is uh, seeing which one can compliment the, the other the most. And uh, that's it. That's it. And I'm so proud of our pastor. God bless you. Turn with me to Acts 2.36 through 40. Acts 2.36 through 40. I was thinking as we were shouting and praising the Lord that no wonder, no wonder why we shout is we have the message we have what it takes to be saved. We got something. We have something to shout. Help me. We have something to shout about. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, talk about singing. I got that singing. I got that singing spirit in me almost. The old song says, thank God I am free, free, free. From this world of sin. Oh, yeah. Been washed in the blood of Jesus. Been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved from this. Oh, I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out, show me the way. Man, I didn't even plan that, but it goes along with my message today. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Verse 37. One more time. They said unto them, after they were pricked in the heart, they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? I don't know what you think about it, but I got a feeling that Peter said, I'm glad you asked. Can I preach about it? I'm glad you asked. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad you asked. You may be seated. The most important question was, Men and brethren, what shall we do? <clears throat> Pastor talked several months ago, coming from the book of Acts, from this, from this verse. He said, you got to ask the right question. The right question is, what must I do to be saved? A question, of course, is a problem, a matter, a point which needs to be considered. And if there's any question in this world that needs to be considered, it is, God, what does it take for me to be right with you? Amen. I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about dogmas and creeds. But God, what does it take to be saved? I'm not planning on preaching something that doesn't matter today. I don't have time to waste to our online guest. Thank you for, thank you for showing up online. And uh, I will tell this congregation I'm preaching to more than just you today. Somebody in this place, uh, probably about 15 people here today, needs to be baptized in Jesus' name. And there's probably about 15,000 out yonder online that needs to be baptized in Jesus' name. I feel like telling you what it takes to be saved. The first question of the Bible was asked by uh, the serpent asked Eve, hath God said? Then the, question, the first question God asked was, and the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Where art thou? And it was addressed by God to the first man. And of course, likewise to us today. A. McAuslin said four things. Number one, when he said, where art thou? He, he was saying that God does think about us. We're on his mind today. We're his creation today. He wants us to be right with him today. Second thing he wants he was trying to say is that God does speak to us. And however that may be, mostly it's by the Word of God. It's not by some audible voice coming. It's not by anything else advertised in the news or whatever, but it's God speaks to us through His unadulterated Word of God. Number three, that God knows when you are not in your right place. And number four, that God wishes to tell you, tell him why you are not in your right place. As he dealt with Adam, so he deals with us. To him, you are responsible for all your actions as well as your words. The last question in the Bible was a question with an exclamation mark instead of a question mark. Revelations 18, 16 through, uh, through uh, 18 said, uh, it said us, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold, precious stones and pearls, speaking of Babylon, 
For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what, what is like, uh, what city is like unto this great city? I'm telling you, there was a, the Bible scholars estimate that there are approximately 3,300 questions in the Bible. The greatest of all questions, again, is what must I do? Hallelujah. They said, what shall we do? And Peter, again, I would, I would think he's like I am today. I'm glad you asked. Well, I've been, a, I've been in the company of many people over the past 54 years of my ministry. And as I witness to them, oh, I've seen them come across the table, if you will, saying, please tell me what I got to do. All I want is somebody out yonder today to say, what shall I do? I got the answer. I said I have the answer. And it's in the word of God today. It's not what I want to tell you. But I am happy to tell you. Because it does save man from a hot burning hell. You're on your way to burn forever and ever. If you obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, warm up your praises some more. One of the definitions was when they said, what shall we do? One of the def definitions of sh what shall we do was, what do I need to do to make ready, to prepare? Now, we going, we're going somewhere. We're not going to stay here forever. You don't have to go to heaven, but you can't stay here. So you might as well get ready to go to heaven because there's not but one more place to go. That's a hell on fire to burn forever and ever. Woo! So somebody ought to be begging me today to tell them what shall I do? What must I do to prepare because I am leaving? Hallelujah. Pastor, my mother was a quiet lady, as you can remember. She didn't just blab off stuff. She didn't just spurt out stuff. She didn't just ramble and carry on a bunch of stuff all the time. Oh, but Brother Patton, if you ask her a question, you better get ready for the answer. She was not going to hem haw around about it. She was not, was was not going to step aside and get beat around the bush and tell you. But she would tell you just like it was, not with a mean attitude or mean spirit. But she bet, if you're going to ask her, you better get ready for the answer. Hallelujah. If you're going to ask me today, you better get ready for the answer. I tell you what, I think you'll like the answer. Whoa, it's the Word of God. It's what sets men free. It's what brings them out of darkness into this marvelous light. It's the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, that you can have by coming through the Word of God. For them to ask this question certainly meant that these Jews were definitely, the Bible said, pricked in the heart they were deeply perplexed they were stirred they 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 of course were founded and grounded on the the law the blood of bulls and goats sending their sins on ahead to the perfect lamb that was going to be slain but they were they were under the tradition if you will of the law and they, they they this Jesus that came on the scene to them it meant meant nothing he came, the Bible said, to his own, and his own received him not. They were not ready for him, even though they needed him. Jesus just as seen, just, they had just seen Jesus mocked and beaten and vilified and humiliated, crucified in quote-unquote weakness and disgrace. 
They were told by the rulers that he was a deceiver. They had just seen, come on now, they had just seen and heard Pentecost. They saw him come out of the upper room talking in tongues. Woo! As the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Hallelujah. They had just seen the greatest phenomenon since the resurrection. Hallelujah. Since creation, if you will. Since they had, and, 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 and they were, they, they had heard, if you will, Jesus say, destroy this body. And in three days, somebody else is going to raise it up. No, no, no. I will raise it up. They had heard all these claims, and now just a few days ago, they had seen these claims come true. So consequently, they were pricked in their heart. They couldn't deny that Jesus was the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. It was no way they could deny it. There must be something about this Jesus called Messiah. Because these people are speaking in our own languages. We are from every nation known under heaven. And behold, are not these all? You can look in the second book of Acts to find what I'm preaching. Amen. We're, we're from every known nation under, on the earth. They, they, don't, they, 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 don't, they don't know our language. Behold, they're all Galileans, but they're speaking in our tongues. Come on, I'm telling you. When we get the Holy Ghost moving, when we get the Spirit of God moving, it's going to prick people in the heart. When they hear that God hath made this same Jesus, both Lord and Christ, he was not a second person in a so-called trinity. But Jesus was the God of the Old. He was Lord of the Old Testament and God of the New Testament. I just feel like shouting about that. Except you believe that I am He. You shall die in your sins. Mm -hmm. Ye men of Israel, 222 of Acts. Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. They saw him. They had seen those signs and wonders. Blinded eye open. Deaf begin to talk. Dumb begin to hear. Deaf and dumb. And then they seen all the miracles. They saw Lazarus being raised. God, God this Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. Peter said, I'm glad you asked. He, this God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know him, be, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain him. Well, you did it. 24, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly again that God hath made this same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. Come on, this Jesus name, one God message will prick people in their heart. I don't care what dogmas and creeds say. I don't care what denominalism says. From back starting in 300 after AD, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about this, but I am concerned about what thus saith the word of the Lord. Come on. And when you preach the word, it pricks people in their heart. Come on. Thank you, Pastor, for getting up here and reminding us that we're an apostolic church. We believe in Jesus' name, baptism. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe in talking and talking. We believe in holiness. 
what shall we do? Or oh, what do I need to do to get prepared? Mm-hmm. I'm glad you. I can't hear you. I'm glad you asked. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Jesus had already said it before. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And he said it again. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Come on. They wanted Jesus to come down from the cross. Because repentance is a type of death. And if Jesus had come down off the cross, it would not have given us the example of repenting. But Jesus stayed on that cross and died an innocent man so the guilty could be free. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, yes. So he led us through repentance. And a, and, 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 and a, a joining a church or, or coming to God so-called by any other way than repentance will not get you the right answer to the right question. That's why, my God, that's why Peter said, repent. Die out to your sin. Give up your sin. There's a lot of places. All you have to do to get in their church. And I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to be truthful. I love you, whoever you are. But I'm telling you, amen, if you only come and accept the Lord so-called as your personal Savior, without repentance, you hadn't accepted the Lord. As your personal savior. Because you gotta lay my God, you gotta lay sin aside. You gotta let leave sin behind. It's repent. You know what repent is? When, when the soldier is making one way down the lane, and then he has to turn and go back. They simply say, repent. And they turn and go the opposite way. When you come to God, you go the opposite. You go the opposite way of where you've been going. I'm glad you asked. That's death. Repentance. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The next step after dying, after repenting, is getting buried. Hey Amen. You don't want to die and not be buried. Or we don't want you to die and not be buried. Come on, literally and spiritually. Whew. Man, is this okay? I'm glad you asked. Be baptized, every one of you. You know what baptism is? It's immersion. It's not sprinkling. Romans 6 tells us, therefore we are buried with him in baptism. Come on. If I'm putting you down in the water, I intend to get you hair to toenails. Baptized. Buried. In the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I just want to tell you, Matthew 28, 19. I'm skipping a little bit here right now. You may, you may have to catch me up here. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. What? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It didn't say baptize in the titles, but it said baptize in the name, singular, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the name of the Father is Jesus because he said, I come in my Father's 
name. The name of the Son is Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Oh, the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. The Holy Ghost, the Comforter, I will send in my name. That's why Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the way, that's the first message ever preached after Matthew, after this Matthew commandment from Jesus. First message was preached was when he said, they said, men and brethren, they were all there. The apostles, were, the disciples, all the apostles were all there. They stood up with the 11. He stood up with the 11 and said, this is what you got to do. You ask the question. I'm glad you ask it. So repent. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right, every one of you. Clap your hands a little bit. Praise them a little bit. I feel something in the air. You know what Mark recorded? Mark recorded it this way. He that believeth, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. They say, whoever they are, that you don't have to be baptized to be saved. But my Bible says, he that believeth and is. Put it on the screen for me, will you? Mark 16, 15. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be damned. Shall be damned. Come on. I want to find out what I got to do to prepare to be saved. Woo! It's in the book, folks. It's in the book. Well, let's go to the next verse. 24, 47. Luke recorded this way. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You know why Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem was the mother of us all. That's where it started. That's where the church began. It didn't start back yonder in, in Jesus' dispensation. He recorded it. It's going to be preached. Repentance and remission of sins will be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Oh, yes. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. And he led us, he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Watch this point. Come on. If they were saved then by a blessing. Come on. They were not saved then by a blessing. He blessed them. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of people that's got a blessing of repentance of some sort. They have a blessing that they just know that there is a God. It's a blessing to know that. But a blessing did not save them. He led them as far as to Bethany, uh, Bethany and said, uh, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. But he said, you go to Jerusalem, 49, verse 49, until you be, in, but tarry in the city of, uh, uh, you know, of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Matthew, Mark, and Luke recorded it. Hallelujah. I'm glad that repentance and remission of sins started in Jerusalem. I'm glad I'm still in the Jerusalem church. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord added to the church daily 
such as should be saved. I submit to you, people say, well, I don't want to join the church. I'm not asking you to join the church. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You got to repent and you got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And the next verse said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're going to be added to the church. If you don't want to be added to the church, then you're going to be lost. Because he adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. You can't separate yourself from the church and be saved. If you're going to be saved, you're going to be added to the church. Come on, let's shout a while. Let's praise him a while. Let's believe him a little while. You sit down. That way you can stand up again in a minute. Mm -hmm. Tell me when my time's up. Y'all ready to quit? I'm not ready to quit. I'm tired enough to quit, but I ain't ready to quit. Excuse me. What did he say next? Acts 2.38. Peter said to them, repent. Let's go back to that verse on the screen, can we? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. Come on, that's the, that's the only name that w will wash away sins. And that repentance and remission of sins will be preached in his name. Come on. It's the name of Jesus that washes away sin. Titles won't wash away your sin. You can't take a check to the bank on me and say, I'm taking this in the name of Father. Come on. I am a father. I am a son. And I do have a spirit. I'm a husband. But that's not my name. You can't take that check to the bank and get it cashed. And if you took one of me, you probably wouldn't get much if you put my name on it. But I tell you what you can get if you put your Jesus' name in the water. You can get remission of. You can get remission of sins. And you shall receive. 238. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. It's not all about dying. It's not all about being buried. Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism. But we rise to walk in newness of life. Romans 6. We rise to walk in newness of life when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Come on now. There's a lot of people that may have died. There's a lot of people that may have been buried. But Jesus went through death, burial, and resurrection to give us the example of what must we do to be saved. Now we rise to walk in newness of life. I don't know how many people that I've took to the watery grave and baptized them in Jesus' name and they came out of the water talking in tongues. That's the Bible way. I said, that's the Bible way. Mm. Can I just talk to you a little while? Can I just tell you a few life experiences that I've had? The Wilson Brothers Quartet back in 1970 or so, that's been, Lord, that's in the last century. That's a, that's a long time ago. You know, I don't even look that old, do I? I feel it right now, but I don't look at doing it. I'm telling you, we were, we were, we were uh, singing down there. And every singing, I believe my brothers could tell you that every singing we went to, whether it was in a Baptist church, a Methodist church, a, a party, a, a, a picnic out on the lake somewhere that they invited us to sing, wherever it was, I said, I'm glad to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. There was a man that came to one of those services in Nettleton, Mississippi, Brother Jack Finney's church. Brother Carson, you might remember Brother Jack Finney. Back Brother Jack Finney's church. This man had been, had been a truck driver, was a truck driver, and he got stirred up. He got pricked in the heart. He got to reading the Bible. 
Come on. Come on. Don't take everybody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. Don't just take some preacher's word for it. Read it for yourself. And so he started reading it for himself. You repent and get, get baptized and get the Holy Ghost. He took his, he took this, this to his Baptist pastor, if you will. And I'm not trying to be harsh by calling names. I'm just trying to be honest and upfront and tell you. I'm trying to help somebody here today. But he took it to this pastor and he said, yeah, it's in the book. But I can't, I can't preach that. If I preach that, then I'll lose my whole cup, whatever. And he said, no. But you know what this honest heart, it pricked in the heart man did. He went to Brother Jack Finney's church where the Wilson brothers happened to be there that night. I think it was a God thing. And when, when Brother Underwood, that's what the, what, that was the truck driver's name, Underwood, when he heard me say, I'm glad to be baptized in Jesus' name and got the Holy Ghost, my God, you know what he said? That's exactly what I need. That's where I want to go. They baptized him in Jesus' name. He got the Holy Ghost. His son-in-law is passing the church in Union County over yonder today, 50 years later. I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. I know it's real. Maybe I ought to get over there and preach this to you. Y'all believe it? Are y'all already to believe it? Are y'all believe in it? Some of you heard me to- tell this story before, but I feel like, I, let me tell you something. Pastor asked me yesterday, we just got home from visiting with a family in, in, in Florida, uh, and uh, he said, would you, would you, are you going to be home? I said, yes, he said. Would you, would you be willing or like to preach? I said, I'm fine with it, whatever you like. He said, I like it. So whatever service you want to preach, I said, A.M. So I came over here last night about 7 o'clock, quarter to, quarter to 7, started praying. My Lord, there's been a times I have struggled to know what to preach. I had just, just you know, couldn't come up with a thought. You know what I'm talking about? And, and just, just, you know, but I've got to pray in here. And, and God began to speak to me. I believe it. I hardly ever say that. You know that. But I believe the Lord began to speak to me. And, as, and I'd pray a little bit, and God would stop me, and he'd start talking to me. I couldn't even pray without him talking. I'm thinking, Lord, I'm trying to pray. But, and, and, this, and this morning... At 5.15 or so, I woke up. I didn't say the Lord woke me up. I just said I woke up. And I was trying to sleep. And God's saying, write this down. And write this down. I had my little notepad on my iPhone. Hallelujah. I didn't have to turn the light on. Wake Sister Pat up. I don't even know if she knew I was... I was in the spirit on the Lord's day or whatever. But I was, I, and I began to, began to write notes. And I'm thinking, God, I'm trying to sleep. But he keeps on pounding these things in my heart. I'm telling you, sir, God wants to, you to have the answer to the most important question in the world. What must I do? And I'm glad you asked. I'm sure glad we don't have a clock up here. I got one back there, but it don't mean a thing to me. Woo! Sit down if you want to. I'm sitting down. I, I learned why Daddy sat down, Craig, when he preached sometime. It was because he was tired. I'm sitting down because I'm tired. But I'm telling you, we was in, we was in, we was in a, a What's, what's the county below Oxford over there? Water Valley County. What's that? What's it? Who? Calhoun? I can't hear you. It's all, it's all going blurry. Anyway. He can't, he's young and he can't understand it. Anyway, down, down yonder somewhere. And we were singing. I don't even know what night it was. Might have been, you know, it was the afternoon. It was a Sunday afternoon. And we sang in a good, good uh, denominal church down there. 
a, a pastor, a great man, loved God, and, and, and I saw him as we were singing. He was sitting like right over here in his church building. And, I, and he, he could almost, if you will, get the Holy Ghost while we were singing. Something dawned on him. He began to ask, what shall I do? And so it was not customary back then for, church, for churches and pastors in those denominations to take you out to eat. But they did that day. And we sat across the table with this, this great man. And, and he got, he got, I got to talk to him some more. You're not going to sit around me long without me telling you something about Jesus. I just just about gonna tell you something. And and so we got to talking and I, I saw him stirred up, I guess, and, and I said, Someday, come up. I'd like to talk to you about an hour. So time went on, two or three weeks, maybe or so, a month or so, and I got a call. He said, I'm coming up. It was a Sunday afternoon. I said, Come on. We sat down in my little 10 by 50 trailer sitting right out there somewhere. Little 10 by 50 trailer. He was concerned of what, what he needed to do to be saved. Oh, yeah, he was pastor, but he needed to be saved. And I showed him Acts 2.38. I put it out before him. Come on. He looked at it, and he couldn't deny it because it's in the book. And, sir, you can't deny it today. Ma'am, you can't deny it today. It's in the book. You can't get around it today. It's in the book. And I'm glad you asked. Woo! And I said, I promise you, if you'll repent of your sins, and get, I can't hardly sit here, and get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He got down beside my my, 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 my kitchen table, our table there in that little 10 by 50 uh, uh, trailer, little mobile home, hallelujah. And we were, he, he got down on his knees and he said, God, I'm sorry if I've taught these people wrong. Please forgive me. And I took him that same hour of the night. The Bible said the same hour of the night. Come on, when you get ready to get baptized, that's the time to get baptized. Jesus could come, and you need to be baptized. You don't wait on a baby to be born. Come on, when it gets ready to be born, you don't put it off. You take care of business. Hallelujah. I took him the same hour of the night back down in that old baptistry. Just me and myself and him, I guess. Maybe Sister Pat, I don't know. Wasn't many of us... If it was any more than just us. Anyway, I baptized him in Jesus' name. He split the water, come out of the water, talking in tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. I'm glad you asked. I can promise I can promise you today if you'll repent and get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Woo. Come on. It's real. You can't pervert this gospel. He says, which is not another gospel. Come on, give me, give me Galatians 1, 6. I'm skipping some things here, but I want, I want to try to wind it up here shortly if I can. He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. There have been a lot of people that have gone the wrong route. They didn't follow this message. And they did it way back yonder. Years after Jesus died and was buried in Pentecost. Amen. They started, the enemy got among them and began to stir up false doctrine. But he said, I marvel that you're so soon removed, you Galatians. Amen. Uh, that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. Verse 7 says, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. 
And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, there's people out there that would sub subvert uh, the, the, the gospel and, 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 and pervert the gospel of Christ to the point that it's a false doctrine. But though we, Galatians 1, 8, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach unto you any other gospel. And there was a denomination that was started by an angel. It was a false doctrine. It come from the pit of hell. But they claimed it was an angel that brought them a plan of salvation. But there's not another gospel. Paul said, if the angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel in you that we have received, let him be accursed. Whoa, hallelujah. I'm glad to know that there is not another gospel and I'm still preaching the same gospel that was preached on the day of Pentecost when they said, what shall we do? What shall we do? Somebody needs to get back ready to get baptized today. Somebody needs to get ready to get the Holy Ghost today. Can I have just a few more minutes? It, it, ain't, it ain't near 12 o'clock. You're not supposed to get out of church to 12. Tradition says. Sit down one more time. Sister Pat helped me with this, helped me with this story. The story goes that we were singing in Union Methodist Church. And uh, between, between Nettleton and Tupelo, on number six highway. Anybody know where Union is? Somebody, anybody else? One, two. So it, it is true, there is a Union Methodist Church. In fact, I knew that because my grandmother's buried there and uncle or two's buried there. One, 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 one of my uncles, I, 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 I dug the grave, preached his funeral, covered the grave up. Thank the Lord it was an urn. <laughs> Cremation, hallelujah. Whether that's right or wrong, don't ask me. But I buried him. I know there's a Union Methodist Church. We were singing out there. Who was it said, if I'm lying, I'm dying? Who said that? There was wall-to-wall -wall people. They were sitting in the windows, if you will. They were in the doorways, packed out house. I mean, it was jammed. My brother Mike sat down at that piano, Brother Will, and he started playing some of them old southern gospel songs, them old quartet-style songs, and he got to talking in tongues right there in that good Union Methodist church, right where my grandma had come up and probably went to church as a child. But he got to talking in tongues, Whew, I'm feeling it right now. Anybody feeling what I'm feeling? As a spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. You know what? We, had, we went on and finished the singing. I'm satisfied. I told them. I'm glad I've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm satisfied I said that. But after that singing, there were some more Pentecostal people that got with some of those other people that were there. And I think they baptized six or seven in Jesus' name before morning time comes. I'm telling you something, sir. It's real. And I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Come on, it's time you get pricked in the heart and ask, what shall I do? Well, this is like eating candy. I can't hardly quit. <laughs> Two women. You can be seated one more time. You ain't got but about four or five more to go. <laughs> Two women right down here about a mile and a half. One of them was, was, was working her garden. The other woman was walking by that was having 
that was uh, had the Holy Ghost. One of them had the Holy Ghost, and they got to talking to each other. They got to talking about church. Let me tell you something, women. You can be used of God, but you can be used of the devil too by your gossip and your hate and your negative stuff about the church. If you got any negative thoughts to say about the church, you need to get rid of them. You don't need to. You don't need to affect some other new convert. Or somebody else that needs to come to church. Keep it to yourself. And get your spirit right. And be right with God. My God. And these women began to pray. And seek God. And brought a revival to Bethlehem. Right down yonder past the old gym. Hallelujah. Right on top of that hill. They had a one room school. Uh, school house. Overton School. That's what it was. That's why this is called Overton School Road. Don't you imagine? But I'm here to tell you they got revival started. That's baptizing different denominational people in Jesus name. Hence today there's a one God Jesus name church. A Bible believing church in Bethlehem. Bethlehem had never been the same. Bethlehem had never been the same. And I suggest to you that's listening to me today, you will never be the same. If you've never heard this message, you'll never be the same. Because I'm telling you, what thus saith the Lord, what must I do to be saved? Can I tell you one more story? Y'all got to go, just go. But I'd rather you stay because this is good too. I was knocking doors one day, as I did frequently in the 60s and 80s, 70s and 80s, and whatever. Across the, across the, I was going to say street. We don't have streets out here. Across the road, there was a Baptist pastor knocking doors too. I give him some credit for at least 11 souls enough to get out and try to get people to come hear something. Somehow or another, we met maybe in the middle of the road. And I said, I think I told him the same thing. Come over, I'd like to talk to you about an hour or something. Make a long story short, Wilson Brothers Quartet went out of business. We didn't quit singing, but we went out of business, whatever that means. <laughs> and uh, so we're selling some sound equipment, some big old speakers. Tony, you remember those big A7 speakers? There's about 10 foot wide, seemed like. Not really, it's about this wide. Anyhow, we're selling some sound equipment. So he came to look at it. I walked him through the church that we had at that time. It's before this building was built up. And I, I talked, walked him through it, walked him on into the office. And I asked him, what's the difference between your denomination and ours? I already knew. I knew more about what the difference was than he did probably. But I wanted to get him asking me, what shall I do? So he got to, we got to talking, and I said, repent, be back, y'all help me finish that. <laughs> and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Man, something got a hold of him, it stirred him up, thank God. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll do, I'll obey this message if you, if you will pray with me that if I'm wrong and you're right that God will knock the lights off. I'm thinking, oh boy, you're not going to put me on the spot. I said, okay. We got down and prayed. The lights didn't go off. But I tell you what, the light did come on right up here in this little old crane. You know what I told him? Hand me your Bible. Hand me your Bible. Hand me your Bible. I said, 
God's not obligated to give you another sign. The wicked and evil generation sought after a sign. I didn't tell him that at that time. But I said, I said, God's not obligated to give you another sign. It's already written in his book. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We didn't baptize him at night. He came to church, sat back there. I wish you'd have known Daddy more. But Daddy, you did know him, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit. He came to church one night. And he was sitting in the middle of the middle, middle back there. And, and so Daddy said, read Jeremiah, I think it's six or something. Stand you in the way, see Seek and ask for the old past there, and you shall find the good way. And he had him read it. We went home from church that night. A few days later, maybe in a few weeks. I don't even remember. It's been 50 years ago, I guess. But 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm usually way out in the other world at 2 o'clock, sleeping like crazy. If you want to bother me, it's bother, best to bother me about 9.30 or 10 in the morning, not 2 o'clock. <laughs> and anyway, the knock on that little door. And he said, can I talk to you? The same man. I said, come on in. He said, let me go talk to the boss. I thought it was his wife. <laughs> like most women are never. <laughs> That's what some people think anyway. Not mine, but maybe yours, but not mine. I'm over here saying that, by the way. I thought he was talking about his wife was, you know, in the car. Let me go talk to her. No, it was, he said, I want to pray. So he go, walked around, probably a little old gravel road out here somewhere, I don't know, praying. And a little, it gave me time to get my PJs on at least, get halfway dressed so where I could talk to him. And so he come back in, sat on that little couch. And I said, I promise you, if you repent of your sins and get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There was a man sitting by him, and he looked over at the man, and, and he said, it's in the book. This Baptist pastor said, it's in the book. Sure, it's in the book. And I'm glad you asked Hallelujah. He got up from there. I took him about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, baptized him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He came out of the water talking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you one more time. It's real. It's real. It's real. Hallelujah. Both of those pastors are going on to meet the Lord today. But at least I got to tell them what it takes to be saved. And I'm submitting to you, you better do something with this plan of salvation today. You don't need to tarry. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. Today's your day to get baptized in Jesus' name. Stand with me. Keep your mind on what we're doing right now. Keep your mind on what we're doing right now. Listen, this is not just something that Bethlehem de decided to cook up. This is the Word of God. This is not something that Alvy Bishop decided he wanted to preach. No, this is the Word of God. It's not something that J.L. Pipkin preached for a little while down here. It's the Word of God. It's not something that uh, Bishop J. Frank Wilson preached a little while. It's the Word of God. It's not something that Steve Wilson preached for a little while. 54 years now, by the way. And, and, and it's not just what I preach, but it's what thus saith the Word of the Lord. It's not what Pastor B is saying, but it's what thus saith the Word of the Lord. I'm telling you, how many have we baptized since February? 64 or 5, 6. 64, 5 or 6 in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something. It's happening all around the world. We got a, we got a, we got a report from foreign countries 
six and seven thousand people baptized and got the Holy Ghost in this country, in that country. Come on, I'm telling you, what must I do to be saved? Come on down here. Somebody needs to be baptized today. Somebody needs to be baptized. Come on, saints, bring your friends with you. Come on, come on, come on, it's time. I had a classmate I went to school with 12 years. I got a report. It's been a long time now. But I got a report some time ago that he was... He was praying, seeking God between here and the Alabama line somewhere. Tupelo. He pulled over and began to talk in tongues. As the Spirit of God give the utterance. I, I didn't even finish it. For the promise is unto you. Acts 2.39, if you want to put that up there. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all those that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah. It's for everybody today. It's for you today. You say, but I already joined the church somewhere. Come on. A blessing's not enough. The Word of God is what you got to do to be saved. Do you want to go to heaven or not? Do you want to be saved or not? There's no substitute for this. This is your day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, your day of Pentecost has fully come. You ought to say, I want it. I got to have it. I need it. I got to have it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There's no substitute for this, folks. There's no substitute. For... All over this place, lift your hands. All over this place, lift your voices. All over this place, let's receive the Holy Ghost today. Let's receive the Spirit of God today. Let's receive the Spirit of God today. It's for you. It's for your children. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be over. Shake him, you can have the Holy Ghost today. You had been baptized if you're watching online today. You had been baptized in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on down. Call the church. Call us. We can help you get baptized in Jesus' name. You don't need to turn. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait. To be by your presence.
our hands all over this place while they're singing this chorus. And can you welcome the Spirit of the Lord into your life? God, I want everything you have for me. God, I want everything you have for me, Lord. God, if it's in your Bible, I want it. If your word says I need to do it, then I'm going to do it. Come on, can you talk to God that way? You can't come to God on your terms. you got to come to God on His terms. Somebody in this place wants to be baptized in Jesus' name. This is the day for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I feel the presence of the Lord here. Sing it again. Why don't we talk to the Lord? Don't wait on me to talk to you. You ought to talk to Jesus. Lord, what do I need to do? You heard the answer today. The answer is repent. You can do it right now, right where you are. God, forgive me. God, I need to be washed. I need my sins forgiven. I need my life turned around. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we've got water, clothes. We've got everything you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brother Josh, back there on the middle camera, how long How long has it been since you and Shantae got married? Somebody wanted to yell it out because I got old ears. Six years. On the day they got married, I was getting ready for that ceremony. People were starting to get here. And I had a denominational preacher from Verona come to my office. And he said, I, I, need, I need something from God. I need God to do something in my life. And I said, I know what you need. I said, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And so while they were getting ready for that wedding, in the nick of time, before we got one married, we got one buried. And when he come out of that water, the Holy Ghost hit that man. And he shouted in that water. He said, I've never experienced anything like this in all my life. He said, I've never felt like I feel right now. That's what this man's been preaching about. And that's what you can have today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your word. Reach over and lay your hand on somebody close to you. Just pray with them. Lord, I ask you, God, have your way here. Oh, that's right. Come on, let's pray. Somebody's ready for that life change. All you got to do is tell somebody close to you. They'll help you. They're not going to march you up here on the platform. They're not going to make it but they'll take you back and help you get ready and somebody will baptize you in Jesus' name. Before you leave here, there'll be a turnaround in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you're baptized, you become a brand new creation in Him. God wants to make your life brand new. I feel it right now. I'd stop. I'm hungry, but I'd stop if I felt like I could. But somebody is right on the verge of their breakthrough. Somebody's right on the verge of their whole life being turned around in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, I feel it here right now. The spirit of revival is in this altar right now. Amen. The spirit of revival is in this altar. Maybe you've already been baptized, but you can throw your hands in Jesus' name and get a good old-fashioned refilling of the Holy Ghost.